Hello, everybody, and welcome to fucking World Poetry Day. Yay, it's fucking World Poetry Day. Isn't that fancy? Aren't we excited? There's so much to talk about. And I woke up to some news that I didn't like on World Poetry Day. Although it happened two days prior, I woke up to some news I didn't like. Um, In case you haven't heard, Neely Tchaikovsky has died. Okay? So, what that means is all of you educated fucks out there can now take his poetry seriously and, like, teach his work and, like, bring him up like he's a fucking real fucking deal. Okay? Dude fucking just kept on fucking living and no one gave a shit. So, as a true artist, he's fucking dead now. So, fucking teach his work. Fucking, like, let people know that it's okay to like him now. Do all the fucking stupid shit that fucking academia does and suck a fucking dick. I just started, Shaylin, so I don't know, like, how two speeds going to, like, you're going to be farther along than I am. Oh, I'm so fucking pissed off right now. Oh, I'm so fucking mad. I need a cup of coffee. So yeah, so I'm done trying to fucking meet poets. Ah, get it, meet poets, that's funny. No, like, there there were literally, like, two poets I wanted to meet, and now there's one, and I'm just, I'm fucking over it. I don't give a shit anymore. Just gonna um, read people's stuff. I'm gonna just read a bunch of poetry today. Um, uh, you're always late to the party. Shaylin fucking Marks. Gets there when she wants. I'm just kidding. How, how's work going today? I've been up for like three seconds, which is why I look like a cockatiel on the half of my head. I was going to post a video today about um, stalking, but um, got pissed off about doing that. And so I wasn't going to do that. And now here we are. It's World Poetry Day. And Neely Tchaikovsky is dead. So. I'm not mean to you. Oh, no. I'm sorry, work is dumb. But fortunately slow. That sounds like three of my ex-girlfriends. So it work it checks out. Everything's fine. Da 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 da. What song is that? Uh uh. Oh, it's that fucking Tokyo Drift song. I'm like, what song am I singing in my head? Fucking hell. So Neely is dead. Holy shit. <sighs> well, now he has a good reason to not answer my emails. Whereas a year ago, he did not have a good reason to answer my e- emails. So now he's off the hook. Dude, they're really fucking catchy, right? Uh oh. 
fucking annoying. And then, like, some chick comes in, right? And she's like, something, something, Tokyo. Uh, uh, something, something, Tokyo. Oh, fucking shit. <clears throat> Oh, I'm so pissed off right now. Have I even bothered waking up? Yeah, I was doing nicotine patches yesterday and smoking cigarettes, and apparently that could give you a heart attack. Nobody fucking told me until after I had been doing it, and I just lost my hair tie. So it looks like I'm doing something about Mary today instead of just fucking, like, whatever. London Bridge. Oh my gosh. Yeah, start singing that song. I haven't heard that in a hot minute. I'm getting mad now. Yeah, totally. I said that in a video yesterday and I thought, oh, Shaylin loves it when I say that. And I was like, seriously, like getting mad now. I've seriously been awake for like eight minutes or however, like, is, okay, so this has been six minutes. I've been awake for like maybe 10. <clears throat> I'm, I'm fucking on one right now. I'm fucking on one. So like I was originally going to post some videos today, but now I just think I'm going to live stream all day because um, I was going to print out my new chat book and like staple them and do all this shit and now I just feel like fuck everything it's world poetry day so I'm gonna read some poetry and make some poetry books um be pissed off about um <sighs> yeah, so. Totally. Yeah. Ugh. Shit. <sighs> so, um. And I want to, like, kind of talk about, like, favorite poets. Now, some of you might be going, how can you tell if a poet is one of your favorite poets? If you love a poem by someone and that poem speaks to you, that's all you need, you know. If a poet has a collection and you like two poems out of that collection and those poems mean a lot to you, that's one of your favorite poets, you know. Like, it, it doesn't need to be anything. It needs to be somebody who created something that you love. And... Um, our shitty academic society um, has this strange fucking um, thing about really, really celebrating 
people when they're alive. And um, it's fucking bullshit. But um, now, like, I expect every fucking, like, university program, every fucking, like, person who loves poetry and loves the beats and blah, 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 to be sucking on fucking Neely's dick forevermore, you know? So it's, 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 it's acceptable now. Um, so fucking stupid. What's up, Gareth? Um, come to find out how are you, but to be fair, it's uh, I have to I hate these this heart thing that makes me not be able to read things. Okay, um, it's hard as I'm at work. Oh, bro, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Oh. but yeah, seriously, like. I just, uh, yeah. So, and I'm sure people will be buying a bunch of his stuff now. If you go to Lithic Press, um, they have a lot of his stuff and like a lot of other places do too. But um, if you remember not that long ago, I got that package from um, Kyle and he sent me a bunch of Lithic Press stuff and a bunch of Neil Leaf shit. So that was really cool. Uh oh. La, 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 la. Fuck. So yeah, World Poetry Day. Um, and I think next month is National Poetry Month, so I'm sure I'll fuck that up somehow and make that really fucking dark and gloomy. But yeah, so I'm going to read a bunch of poems. Um, I didn't think I was going to be emotional. So I don't know how... I'm going to do this. And yeah, like there's emotion because like I'm sad, but um, there's like a lot of this is um, fucking rage because I've been wanting to meet him and talk to him and interview him and um, like spend time recording him and shit like um, and that's fucking gone so um, there's a part that's sadness, but more a part of me wanting to fucking break everything. And I fucking right now. <clears throat> Fuck. So anyway, how's it going today, guys? Um, not trying to get super down here, 
But um, I noticed you guys are here. Drop a hello in. Let's let's see how we could fix this shit before I start like literally destroying my apartment. Not that you guys have to talk me off ledge. I'm more like out of control, destructive mode right now. Not necessarily on me, but on um uh, so I'll show you a little book of his. Okay. <clears throat> but if I'm honest, um, started the live stream Poetry Day filibuster um, also because I thought if there was a, um, a permanent record of me right now, I wouldn't act like a fucking child. So we'll see how true that is. Hello, JH. Thank you. I mean, <clears throat> I feel petty. Like, don't. <sighs> like, I'm fine. I'm just fucking angry as fuck. So, um. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> yeah, don't don't feel feel all the feels. Yeah, for no, oh. it's like um when uh you have I don't know. It just it sucks. Um. I think, too, when I feel like um, there are only a certain number of masters and greats that I feel um, like a kinship to when um when they're gone they're just um there's not there's just not much left you know gen x jason um let's see here let me get away from this heart thing um, hey, bro, I watch your content, but don't comment. Just wanted to send you some love. Oh, shit, Jason. Thank you, man. Wow. Appreciate you. <clears throat> so anyway, um, we're either going to try, like, I need to fucking not be emotional right now. So I need to um, just do some other shit so we can get into reading poetry and fucking um i wanted to read a bunch of um holy shit like one of my favorite poetry collections of all time is one of his and um i would love to read it and in fact <clears throat> it's this one leaning against time i got this on fucking abe books and it was a signed copy, and they didn't know. So here we are. So now this is worth money. Before, it wasn't worth the paper it was printed on because of how our bullshit academic society works. So um, I just can't wait for all the motherfuckers to like suddenly be talking about how great he was. I cannot wait. 
for these fucking people. Oh, I'm so fucking pissed off right now. Oh, but I mean, if more people read them now, great. It's just, it's fucking sad that that's how this works. It's fucking bullshit. All right, Blazik, I'm talking to you now. If anything fucking happens to you, um, I'm going to fucking bring you back to life just to kill you all over again. So fucking don't you dare, motherfucker. Watch, I find out he died like three months ago and just nobody fucking gave a shit or cared. Oh, my God. So, yeah, so I was going to put together my book today. I also had a crazy idea. I don't know, like, how crazy of an idea this is, but, like, my printer's on its last leg. I'm on my last leg even being here. I was wondering if I should just put together, like, six or seven chapbooks um, and just print them all out with all the paper I have left and just make as many things as I can with whatever materials I have left until my printer dies. And, um, then, uh, just be like, okay, that's it. And then I was also going to just like turn my shit on Etsy back on cause they won't let me delete my fucking account. So maybe put my Etsy back up until I get my Spotify up. Because the reason why I haven't got my Spotify up yet is because I don't want to be on um, WordPress on GoDaddy anymore. I want to, like, move the entire site over to, like, Wix or Squarespace or something. But I also have hosting, like, server hosting on GoDaddy that I've had since back in the Creeperson days. So we're talking, like, 2000 like five or something like that. So they're the moving the, like we're talking almost 20 years of shit on a server. And I have no idea how much that's going to cost to transfer all of that over from all the different websites I've had. And then it's like, do I just let all that die? Is that the only way out of this? Like I can't keep holding on to the past. Like, The kitchen sink edition. And hey, if anyone's here and you haven't picked up Pheromones by Shaylin Marks, go to shaylinmarks.com. There's only six left, last I heard, and get it. It's a wonderful, wonderful book of chappy. Maybe I'll read some of that right now because because that will sound normal coming out of my mouth. Maybe that's the palate cleanser I need. Uh oh. Caitlin, hello. Oh, dude, I'm all about butt plugs. That's what I do, dude. That's what I do. Uh oh. All right, I'll do it. Fucking twisting my arm and shit. And in case she ever decides to stumble across this live stream, um, and since the feels are all out, uh, Bunny Wild, I hope you're doing well. I hope everything's okay. Everyone fucking misses you. Um, and we miss reading your shit. And we miss, like, you participating and stuff. Um, 
So please drop by every once in a while and just let us know that you're alive. Oh, shit. You guys have no idea oh, how hard it is for me to not smash glasses and plates and shit right now. Oh my fucking god. Oh, I am pissed. Okay. And then it's not good that I don't take my trash out very much. And I have all of these giant fucking empty fucking wine bottles around that I just like, oh, man, it's like a kid in a candy store with weapons here, dude. Um, well, you didn't miss a whole lot, Caitlin. Basically, it's World Poetry Day and Neely Tchaikovsky is dead. And... um. Yeah, I think you're caught up. I think that's about it. I think that's, um, I think that's okay. And I'm fine. I'm not having a meltdown. I just woke up to all sorts of this shit. And I've been awake for maybe a half hour now. So um, I'm, I'm frustrated with myself. I'm sad that someone who I thought was great is gone and there's not many left and um, yeah oh man just think about fucking Bukowski fucking what Hemingway and Celine died on the same day and that motherfucker had to fucking go through life and not like want to I don't know. Whatever. You know what? I'm remembering more and more Bukowski shit right now, actually. Of um, him talking about all the people he liked going. Yeah. And Tchaikovsky wrote those... Um, that uh, Bukowski biography called Hank. And I still haven't got the new one, or not the new one, but the one that came out in like the late 90s that had um, like edits and like revisions and a new bit to it. So maybe I'll, I don't know, pick that up or something. Maybe I'll get it on my Kindle now that I have a Kindle. Oh, man. And I keep thinking everything's fine. And then I pick up one of his books and I get all mistied. But yeah, like, this is definitely one of those days that, like, um, day drinking and blowjobs would probably make a lot better. But... We'll pretend I didn't say that out loud. And I am not going to break stuff. It's so funny because all of these, like, places, like, I don't know if they're going to do it, but, like, like Poetry Foundation and all these um, fucking, like, legit magazines and websites and shit, they're going to start, like, 
oh, let's talk about the legacy Neely left on poetry and blah, 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 blah. It's, it, it, and it's just going to fucking, like, oh, my fucking God. Which I'm glad for. Like, I'm glad that people are going to give a shit. But it's just like, why wait? The motherfucker lived. And, like, I know people give him his flowers and shit over time. But um, <clears throat> it's always afterwards. Always. Always. And it's so funny because now I'm like thinking like, I'm like, oh, maybe I was, I came off really strong in my email to him. And maybe that's why he never responded to me. Or um, <laughs> maybe uh, I shouldn't have left a link to my podcast. <laughs> maybe I should have just like said, hey, like there's a possibility I may have a podcast. I would love to interview you and pick your brain about some shit. Um yeah, there are probably a hundred ways I could have um, softened the blow of having to deal with me, but um, but I didn't, and here we are, and um, now I am left with a bunch of unanswered emails. Ah. <sighs> Motherfucker. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you a bunch of his books that I have again. For your perusal, again, we're going to start here because it's tiny. 50 Horses. It's tiny. It's one of the lithic press things. Look at how cute this is. It's a little tiny book. And the paper is so crunchy and fun. Oh, again, Leaning Against Time is a great fucking book. It's one of my favorite poetry collections ever by anyone. So if you see this, get it. If you, and like get it now before the people at A Books and like Half Price Books and all those other places find out, find out, find out that he's dead. You gotta get it quick. Okay, because if, if they find out he's dead, this is going to suddenly be worth more. Or they will charge more for it. Fuck. And um, I haven't read this yet, but this will be a fun one to look at. This is um, Coolidge and Tchaikovsky in conversation. And it's just a conversation. Now, if you look... At this, this is from, I believe Kyle Harvey actually took these pictures. Yeah, edited by Kyle Harvey. He has a YouTube channel where a lot of this conversation he recorded, and like video of. And you can watch it if you want to watch it. It's, it's a great, great video. So, <clears throat> like, open up another window. Google, or not Google it, YouTube search that fucking thing. And um, save that to a watch later for sure. It's definitely worth it. Maybe later I will do a, um, like an OBS stream so I could just play a bunch of his stuff. And again, there's a great picture of him looking good um hang on to the yangs river ah oh, man so up his own ass calling his book some fucking name that not everyone's going to be able to pronounce what a piece of shit this fucking guy 
And then this is the one I have been reading. Another great shot of him on the back. For those of you who like to draw faces, this is a good one to work on. Um, but Elegy for my Beat Generation. And I'm not going to lie. I started reading this book the other day. And um, I was annoyed. It... I can't remember what poem it was. I'll go back and find it. But I got annoyed because I'm like, why does this poem have to come off so fucking up its own ass right now? Damn it, Neely. Just fucking be simple. Like, why are you trying to fucking make this fucking difficult? Uh, and uh, it just goes back to that whole thing. And... um the episode that um, I posted yesterday, um, Hating Poetry with Bucks, um, I didn't mention his name on this, but I was one of the things that I was really bummed out about and discouraged about was when you read someone's older work and like you feel connected to it and then you read their newer stuff and that connection's gone. Like something has happened and that same thing that made you love that artist is gone. It's kind of probably how like people feel about Metallica. Like, oh man, I love Master of Puppets and Ride the Lightning. And then like everything they've done since has just made me angry and upset. <laughs> it's probably something like that. Or like um, for for normal people, Oh, man, I love Black Flag until they did that one album in 2013. Uh, yeah. Same kind of thing. Same kind of thing. Do you want me to sing another awful song from way back when, Shaylin? Because, um, you know... I could, um, you know, feel so fly something, something, and um, do something like a G6 or something, if you prefer that. Oh, getting slizzard. So, yeah, World Poetry Day, guys. In the chat, why don't you put what your favorite poem in the world is? You don't have to type the whole thing out. Just give me a title and a fucking name of someone who's probably dead. That'd be fun. Let's do that. Oh, I'm not going to break things today. Uh-oh. God damn it, dude. I keep thinking I could like read a poem right now and have myself not break down. And then I think about it and I get that like tingle in my nose. So it might take me a little bit longer. So probably have another cup of coffee, um, smoke another pack of cigarettes and yeah. And then we will go from there. Oh hey guys, the Bombi Bay, the Bombi, the Bombi Bay bitch, the Bombi Bay bitch lit fest is Saturday. Um, and if you understood the words I said right there, and you are in Southern California, come on out Saturday. It's free, and the panel I'm on starts at 10 a.m. It'll be lovely. And allegedly, I'm able to sell books there. Although something happened, and I sent an email and have not got a response yet. So we're still trying to like work out the, the the finer details but yeah so that's a thing uh oh oh man i gotta hit up keith too keith phillips <clears throat> Uh 
so anger. It's fucking early. What the fuck am I awake for? Jesus Christ. That's what I get for fucking getting up to take a piss and then fucking looking at my phone. Oh, you never look at your phone when you take a piss. Who who fucking does that? <clears throat> I should still be asleep. These fucking motherfuckers. Oh. Yeah, that's nice. Look at that. Look at all of that sun shining in on here on us, guys. This is what we do. <clears throat> so, um, take a picture of that QR code. And it'll take you to Shaylin's website where some fucking asshole outside's honking his horn because he needs attention. Oh, my fucking God. The Vandal by Shaylin fucking Marks. The living legend. Open the pages of my pocket moleskin. Ink smudges, doodles, a metaphor or two. Flip through to locate the next blank page. Each song about her, speckles of pink, faded red dots splattered all over my lines. Darted to the kitchen, my roommate confessed it all. She snatched a pair of kitchen scissors, sliced her right thigh, and smeared the despair I caused her on every heartfelt word. Wow. Shaylin, that's a good one. Oh, shit. Uh. I'm not going to just read your whole book all the way through. <laughs> I don't want to, like, spoil the whole thing, but I'm just going to read this next one, too. Empty box office. There's a seat reserved for me in her hopeful heart. My attendance lacking profusely, dust caking on this gentle stool. Yet there's a comfort in my earnest intentions, my refusal to crack her porcelain soul for a third time. Our mutual understanding that I've tarnished everything else, but she still waits for me. <clears throat> Pheromones, guys. Take a picture of that. Make your phone do the dirty work. And there you go. <clears throat> And Shaylin does free international shipping. I'm just kidding. I don't know if she really does or not. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh-oh. <coughs> I 
<clears throat> in one of the poetic anarchy classes, um, I can't remember which one it was, but um, I do a Neely poem for the example. I'm gonna have to go back and look through that. One just sent to Germany, so pumped. That's awesome. <clears throat> okay, let me see if I can do this without um, doing something silly. Bing, 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 bing. Bing 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 uh oh Hello everybody today I'm going to be reading a poem out of Leaning Against Time by Nelly Chikovsky. It is one of my favorites. I feel very strongly connected to this piece. It is called Animal. Uh-oh. Okay, Animal. First, I talk to the receptionist, then to a social worker. Next, I'll confer with a medical student and a supervisor. After four intake sessions, I will be assigned a therapist. I am an animal with no rainforest and no wild river. I have no hunting grounds or mountain range. I am trapped, cornered, and anticipating the worst. I called the state employment agency but, they're, but they are only hiring armadillos and leopards this week. Next week, they are in interviewing geese with more than four years' experience. I am lost, and I have no way of telling this to my dog. Comet jumps into my lap. He probably thinks I am a very successful writer. Or maybe he doesn't even know that I write. I am not the one who buys his dog food, but I am the one who opens the can. Comet may not be able to understand the difference. The social worker at the psychiatric clinic asked, what is the matter? I told her how confused I felt. There are strange animals everywhere. The other animals seem well fitted to survival. I am surviving all right, but not on my own terms. I used to be able to stalk my prey and pounce. Now I don't even join the hunt. I want to put on, I want to be put on the endangered species list. I need to be protected. I want a reservation. I will move through water like a dolphin. I will think ocean thoughts like the blue whale. I will soar like a condor over California hills and dart in dust of Ohio brushland like a red fox. I am only a track in the sand. I'm merely a clump of fur on the rose bush. I am practically invisible. Oh, shit. Give me your Tom Waits voice. Oh, I remember you showing this one in a video. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of hard. Well, you will be invisible no more, sir.
<clears throat> Let's see. Hollywood Ranch Market, 3 a.m. The store loves sorrow. It is flooded in joyless wandering. There are am what does that word say? There are amenable clerks with nearly vacant eyes. Older than any Grecian urn. Queens in wrinkled black leather, crones, alchemists, assassins, and failed rabbits fumbling for coins. Retired stuntmen fussing over lemons. Two hustlers giggling at a fruit display. Corroded tin cans quietly singing. Rats and lizards in the cracks of the walls. Able-bodied box boys on cigarette breaks. Timeless human eyes blinking rapidly. Overhead lights way too bright for the shadows that leap for the tomb of petty commerce. <clears throat> Uh oh. Oh shit. East Hollywood. The wind blew down from the Hollywood Hills as if it didn't know the glory of filmmaking or the tragic eyes of those who never made it, despite having tried. It was a vanity to be there, amid geranium lives, trying to ignore the heat and to survive on six-packs over long evenings that curved along broken sidewalks. We'd race to the liquor store for cigars, We'd stumble onto the streets at 4 a.m., singing songs we knew from childhood, his from the Depression, mine from the 50s. They coaxed us forward like pioneers. The territories we found, sheltered waitresses and out-of-luck roofers, sitting in pre-dawn cafes, over coffee and cream. Revolutionary leaders and spiritual masters crowded the counters, ordering bacon and eggs, jostling for attention from movie stars who never came. We spoke of immense desire, our arms gesticulated the grand sweep of armies flooding ordinary life until the sun rose like an angel at the casting door, hoping this time for the call. probably never would have thought that after each poem some middle-aged fucking douchebag would be fucking humming some shit song from 15 years earlier while I was reading poems of him singing songs from the 50s. Good lord. Oh, this is what happens. And then eventually someday someone will read a poem of mine and then I don't know, start singing like a fucking Creed song or something. And I'll want to fucking like come back from the dead just to fucking strangle a fucker. Oh. The Bakery Truck, 1953. We were in Korea 
fighting for the right to take possession of the asteroid belt. I was a kid playing the usual games, winning some, losing more than I needed to. Sometimes I was a fighter pilot in Korea, a foot soldier crossing the line. It was a dirty, stinking, beautiful war. But when the Helms bakery truck would turn onto our block, it was a kind of victory. There were trays of jelly donuts, powdered donuts, glazed and maple covered. The world crumbled, swirled, and flayed its arms in the immortal sky. Mrs. Byfield died of a stroke. Old man Carruthers wrapped himself around a utility post. Lynn's grandpa wore false teeth. Sergeant Tyler lost a leg on Normandy Beach in another war. Oh, in the other war. We lived on Rosewood near the pea field that became an elementary school named after Beethoven. We'd eat our donuts in the front yard, Lynn, Roger, and me, as the 49th parallel led to the killing fields. Later, we bloodied up Vietnam, then set our sights on Iraq with a few other incursions into the bleeding heart. Mr. Friedman went bankrupt. Lucille Latham ran off with the barber. The years turned into brittle leaves. We all moved away. The world didn't end, but it pretended to. We were a field of soldiers alone as time fled. These were trays of dinner. Oh, there were trays of dinner rolls, fresh baked bread, but we loved the donuts. <clears throat> then Jesus died. Buddha died next, followed by Moses and God. We were surrounded by mourning. Do not fucking slam my door with your fucking vacuum right now. Jesus fucking Christ. I am not in the mood to fight a fucking goddamn cleaning person. Oh, my God. The world doesn't end, but it grows confused, even as the bakers bake their bread. Just want everyone to know that little bit with killing the cleaning person was not in Neely's poem about the bakery. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. With arms wide open, la -da 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 -da. yeah. Yeah, you better sing something better. I will, I will allow, I will allow anyone to sing anything that came out of Madeline Kahn's mouth and blazing saddles between my poetry. That that is that is quite all right. Oh, but I don't care who you are, you have to be dressed like Madeline Kahn singing a song in Blazing Saddles if you do do this. Oh fuck me. County Hospital and me afraid of going back home, afraid of cafe windows and the terrace of Cafe Roma, me looking in the mirror, wondering, worried, until this little old woman came and held my hands while they were forced brick and twisted steel, iron bars and lumber, bad air and gray clouds into me then they gave morphine and put me to sleep sewing two fingers back into shape 
And then they wheeled me into recovery where it was very cold. The president of the Union of South Africa was on television saying, never, we will never retreat. I looked down to the courtyard. What words below, <clears throat> whirling around, a drunk asking for trouble and finding it. I saw tops of slender trees, cars pulling up and cars leaving, and all the death and survival and trickery and quickery, or quackery, sorry, and good medicine and nutritional enroding and cockroach swarms in the kitchen and explosive mind devices came together as I drew the blinds and turned to icy white sheets. And this one I just love because I think it is the only poem about a fucking wrestling match that I've ever read. So, <laughs> the wrestling match, 1962. Freddie Blassie and White Trunks moved cautiously to the right. Mr. Moto in blue trunks circled Freddie. The lights were burning like orbs of fire across the arena. The crowd roared, the promoters unfolded tens and twenties. Fat women in nylon trousers leaned excitedly forward. Broad-shouldered shadows hung from the rafters. Blassie down, then Moto down. The bell rang. It was Saturday night in late August in the parking lot. Sad Chevys and ancient Ford pickup trucks performed a ritual of dead silence even as the crowd in the arena went wild when Moto threw Blassie across the ring and onto the ropes. That should be into the ropes, but I know why you said onto. God damn it. Oh, classy Freddy Blassie, dude. Holy shit. So anyway, that's some fun stuff. I'll probably do the rest of it. I just need to make another cup of coffee. God damn. But anyhow, National Poetry Day, or World Poetry Day. Look at that. It's worldwide. Mr. Worldwide. It's like fucking Pitbull up in here. Come on, guys. Let's do this. Ah. <sighs> And I am out of precious, precious dirt water that gives me life and sustenance. Oh, let me show you guys this since, since this is a fun thing. These are some of the greatest things in the world. If you've never had wasabi soy sauce flavored almonds, like you're living under a fucking rock. This will be my breakfast if I could keep it down. Oh, my fucking God. Mm -hmm. That is so fucking tasty. Look at that nice thing of fucking wasabi. Mm, stick my dick in that. <clears throat> you guys didn't hear me say that. I'm sorry. That is fucking tasty. Get back under that rock. There is nothing to see out here. Yeah, no shit. Mm. God damn. 
wonder what else wasabi and soy sauce would taste good on them. At least that I ingest. I wonder if I can make a wasabi soy sauce breakfast burrito. Hmm. That seems legit. That might be something I try to do. Oh man, the feelings I have right now. are probably all horribly selfish. So I should probably just shut the fuck up. What a fucking shit show, man. What a motherfucking shit show. <clears throat> Does anybody love me this morning? Besides you guys, of course. Nope, nobody loves me yet. Okay, that's all right. People usually don't start loving me until about 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night, but that's fine. No worries, guys. Let me see what is going on in the coffee department. And I will not break shit. I will not shatter shit. I will not fucking punch shit. Everything is fine. Nothing to see here. I need that meme, guys, of the dog sitting in the burning fucking room. <clears throat> that one and the one with Elmo on fire. Both of those are okay at this moment. Oh. Let me see. Nothing to see here. Everything is just super, damn it. Oh, wow. That's how old that bookmark is. It has COVID hours on it for the Iliad bookstore. All right. Three mics. I'm going to read poetry from across the room. <clears throat> Mike the Fence drove his cancer onto the sidewalk. His eyes burned with death. His mouth dripped death. His ears rang with the coming winter of dying while in his room. Boxes of stolen cameras and three hot computers hidden under a rented bed. Those like the gold in the galleon. And now I have a full cup of Joe. <clears throat> Two. Mike is oblivious of all the pain but his own. He calls to tell about a new novel or a book of poems. Even if the world dives into oblivion, his words will live but they will die on the telephone as I struggle toward the fine art of listening. That's, that's good. I like that. <clears throat> Three. Mike talked to me in the unemployment line week after week, a nervous, extraordinary thin specter. His gray sideburns reminded me of the passing days his watery green eyes and downturned lips were there to tell me of my own confusion, my own desire to hide as I stepped up next in line to sign for my check and follow my shadow onto the street toward Bank of America, a temple even when you have no prayer, no votive candle, and no God. <clears throat> I 
I don't think votive is how you pronounce that word. I remember that being one of those words that I heard someone pronounce one time and then I saw it spelt and I said, that's fucking stupid. Huh? Yeah. If I'm, if, if that's, if that's legit, somebody phonetically spell how you're supposed to say that in the chat. <clears throat> the old man. The old man was never quite old enough to forget his early plans, nor could he forgive the failures he felt. They rose in his brain even when the hills flattened out and the mountains no longer trembled. He was a Depression-era kid who rode the rails across bison silence, landing in jail for trespassing. The bulls carried iron rods, he'd say, and talk of how you'd lose them between long lines of boxcars. People held no dreams of catastrophic war, yet the war came, a hungry dog at the door. The old man heard the gray fox and the stern brown rabbit, he felt, the beating of their hearts in his own heart. It didn't lessen the pain of time nor ease the, the tremor of tinted memories that retain a menacing power. He opens another bottle of whiskey, pouring just enough to make everything come sharply into focus. He takes the shadow of the fox and the rabbit down a long, dark hall to where an even deeper shadow pours light on the three of them in time for the vanishing point to appear. <clears throat> um, this one's called Cuban... Emigre. I don't know how to say that. He sits in the fog of the morning, thinking only of Havana in 1957 and of what his life had been like. What his life had been like. Oh, no. What his... Dude, where are my other glasses at? Fuck. Oh, my God. Of what his life had been like fucking Americano boys seven days a week. Sempre, as they say, when he was never old. When the clubs were magical, churches glittered with gold. He grips his espresso as if it were the throat of every wild revolutionary who climbs down from the wild mountain to claim the city to take the gold. <clears throat> All right, give me, give me a Minato now. Uh. <clears throat> so let me, <clears throat> since it was hard for me to read that big ass book, I'm going to pick up the smallest book I could find and start reading out of this. And that should, that should fucking work. Oh, let me see here. Um, Adam Gary, what's up? Yo-Yo just got out of an open mic. Perfect watching material for the train home. Was that the poetry over bombs thing? How was that? Like, drop all of the news. <clears throat> okay, one. I wonder if... How many poems? This is way too small to have actually 50 fucking poems in it. Oh, there's only two. Okay, well, there you go. In a book called 50 Poems or 50 Horses, there's only two poems. <clears throat> I would uh, surmise that that means 25 horses a poem. Um, let's see how legit that is. 50 Horses Over a Ridge Like a Story by Zane Gray. Fifty horses in town, close by the towers of finance and despair. We've lost our corner Italian grocer. Now an empty window faces us each day. Fifty 
Fifty horses with white manes and brown bodies. They leap high over the sun and come along the range. After the flood and a great quake, fifty horses all in my head come running past shuttered windows to where deep grass closes and tightly against rays of night, one hundred eyes rise slowly, then come floating across a blue swath of air. Fifty Chinese musicians cross Columbus Avenue and play Italian opera to their dead fans. The Chinese dragon leaves Chinatown and crosses to our espresso cafes. Fifty horses made of bronze sit on the shelf in a curio shop. I think I missed a page. Did I? Maybe I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay, cool. Two. Men rise to build for themselves a horse. Men die to find within themselves a field. Men sing to kill themselves on horseback and play. In green grass, when war comes running with brilliant plans, men give to the horse, magic men survive, horses dive, they go hurtling over the edge of history. <clears throat> Fifty Horses first appeared in Elegy for Bob Kaufman, Sundog Press, 1996. The typeset is a Garmand, and the cover was designed by Car Kyle Harvey and letterpressed by Devan Pennyman on Lakta paper handmade in Nepal. Oh, wow. There's all sorts of stuff going on with this little book. Yeah, it's a gorgeous little book. Look at that cute little thing there. Very nice. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh-oh. It was venue double booked, so had to be in and out. Glad to have caught this and listened to you, brother. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Um, yeah, double booked venues, that drives me fucking more crazy than anything on the fucking planet. Um, <clears throat> the last Creeperson tour we did, um, this was one of the worst things in the world, but um, we were playing in Chicago and um, the venue, the venue that we had promoted the show at, actually was not the venue we were to be playing at. I don't know how the fuck that got fucked up, but um, it was on the complete other side of town. And then when we got to the place that we were playing at, like the promoter had a falling out with the guy at the club or whatever, I don't know. So then we get to the place that we're going to play at and we're like loading our shit in to a um, open mic comedy club. And the place was like half packed, if, if that, to um, people in Chicago trying really hard to tell good jokes and just couldn't fucking do it. And um, like doing stand up's difficult on its own, but like if you're already like nervous as fuck to be up there and you're trying to like understand timing of jokes and punchlines and trying to connect with the audience and stuff. It was just fucking painful. So by the time we went on, um, most of the comedy show people were gone. And then by the time people found out where we were playing that night at the show, most of the people showed up like when we had like two songs left. So like, I don't know. I have no idea why I told that story other than you said a venue was double booked, but I was angry. Whatever. Uh-oh. 
Yeah. So again, guys, wasabi soy sauce almonds are the shit. Mm. Oh no. Oh shit. I kind of would like to find something in here to read. I just I've never even opened this, so I just don't know. Um uh oh mm. Yeah, these motherfuckers can talk, dude. <laughs> yeah, maybe I won't read anything out of that. Maybe I'll go back to this. <clears throat> oh, man. Let's see. It's called Grandmother. <clears throat> I got old honey, she said, as the wind whipped from the sea and the crossing guard held one hand up against murder and deceit. I got old and there's nothing to be done. My feet hurt. The ladies talk about each other. I don't like it here. I want to go back to my old place. We drove her home to her place by the ocean as trams ran down from the sun and pieces of death pocked the street corners and the policemen stood like prison camp guards against burnt piling of Ocean Park Pier. There was a blind man in a three-wheeled cart who sat there for 59 years selling mechanical monkeys. My mother bought one when she was a child, and I had one too that my grandmother bought. I thought of the monkey with hairy red arms and red plastic eyes as I helped her onto the elevator. I got old, honey, she said. My father threw coins to poor people. He had a mill in Russia. And when it snowed, we wore big coats and played in drifts. But I got old. I had a hard life. Nobody helped me. Be good to your father. Get married. Have children. Save your money. And then she was in a home out in the valley first in her own room, then in a shared room. Finally, she lay strapped to a bed in a dormitory. This is your Russian girl who learned her lessons well and dreamed of America. And Golden Medea, I don't know what that is. And here is death and life, darkness, light, the good inclination, a string of evil beads. This is your son, and here is your daughter-in-law. This is your grandson, your granddaughter, your great-grandchildren. But she had forgotten us and lay there motionless, and the wind whipped in from the sea. Oh, man, that's fucking awful. God damn. So, how's everybody doing today? on World Fucking Poetry Day. Two days after Mia Lee falls. Ah. So yeah, I think I'm going to print out some chapbooks and um, do some stapling. 
And I think I'm going to just make as many as I can. Like with all the different card stocks I have left and just try to like use up everything and just have a big plethora of inventory to die with or whatever. I think that's going to be the plan. Oh, man. <sighs> Kyle Harvey is probably having a really fucking hard time right now. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe Kyle is a much stronger man than I. <laughs> but he was very close with Neely, so... Um, I wish him all the best. And if you're watching this, bro, yeah. Yeah, I um, killed my Etsy store because I was pissed off at Etsy. And um, so I was thinking today maybe I should just put my because Etsy won't let me like actually delete my store without jumping through a bunch of hoops and that makes me angry so I was thinking maybe I should just put my stuff back up on Etsy and um until I actually have the other store up and running let's see if I can do it right now we'll do live Etsy fucking And then maybe I'll do inventory and make sure they don't fuck me on inventory again. Because that was the other problem I was having with Etsy. Um, I would sell stuff and the inventory feature wasn't keeping up to date. And so I would run out of things and they would still have it in my store. And then someone would buy something that I didn't have any copies of. And then I'd have to fucking, hey, I'm really sorry about that. But da -da 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 -da, can I interest you in anything else? And everyone's nice about it, but it's just fucking annoying that um, that's a thing. Wait, is this the app? La na la na 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 na. Uh oh. Let's see here. Is this gonna fucking work? Oh, in case you guys haven't listened to poetry says lately. <clears throat> um, there is an episode, I think it's called, it means what it says. It's not, it's probably not the newest episode or maybe it is the newest episode. I don't know. <clears throat> it's one of the newest episodes, but it's called, it means what it says. And that shook me to my fucking core. So if you've never listened to poetry says before, go listen to that episode. It's great. Come on, motherfucker. Let's see if this works. Where are my passwords for this site? Uh oh. There better fucking be one on here because I don't fucking remember what I signed up with Etsy with. Um, okay, cool. Boom. Sign in. Let's see, guys. Oh, I'm not able to do anything with them anymore. Okay, cool. Well, there you go. That saved that fucking issue. Is it going to tell me why? That'd be interesting. Um, let me see. Marketplace. Oh, I need to make my account secure. So they suspended my account. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh. Oh. Oh. My billing information is not working. Okay, so that's something I could work on right now. That's fun. I'll do that. <sighs> Every fucking day there's something else, man. But I guess if Etsy suspending my account is the only horrible thing that happens to me today, it's a victory. But yeah. <clears throat> so let's see here. I'm going to read some more poems and figure some other shit out. Let me see. 
I'm kind of pissed off. So let me see if I have any good rage poems in this fuck you book. Uh, <laughs> Did I read this the other day? I can't remember if I read this the other day or not. Okay. This is called The Adventurer. Solitude in spurts is healthy, but too often solitude becomes isolation, becomes loneliness. Finding new caves or burning bushes isn't enough. That doesn't make you not alone. One needs more. It's always a struggle, always a fight. But when you rescue her, we all know she's really saving you. Uh oh. Uh, 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 uh. What else is in here? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Up there in the nothing. Being in a city of millions, always feeling trapped or watched, it's very claustrophobic. But when I look up, if I'm higher than the streetlights, I can see out there, out into the darkness, out into the vast nothingness, and suddenly feel small, suddenly feel close to non-existence. I am a little speck of shit in the grand scheme of everything and nothing, the living and the dead, the haves and the have-nots. I am the most insignificant thing that ever was or never was. I do not matter, never did, never will. I am just here until I'm not. And all the madness around me here on this rock will go about its day without a thought or care as the ambulance drives off over the hill with the fresh shell that once held all of these horrible and tragic feelings and thoughts and I will be no more and never again. Wow, that got fucking dark as shit. I, I notice I say that a lot after I'm done reading something I wrote. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that one's kind of long. Um, let's see, how long is this one? Oh, that one's not long. I'll, I'll, I'll put my dick in this one for a minute. <clears throat> Who I was before. I used to be happy. I used to smile. I used to be content. Back when I had baby fat on my arms and face, not this grown up fat that doesn't seem to go away. Back then the sun felt different. Grass smelled different. I was carefree. I pet cats even though allergic. <clears throat> I played in the yard the house, the park, not caring if I had friends or not. I was content. Then somewhere, probably around the time of kindergarten, all those carefree feelings were ripped from me. Conformity, that was the law of the land. Nothing else mattered. Mold me into a future taxpayer or else you are bad at your job. <clears throat> she was bad at her job. Uh, let's see here. I swear. Mm. Mm. 
I swear I am a plague on women. The best thing I give them is perspective and understanding that they should strive for more. I heal wounded strays, and the second they can flap their wings, they are gone. I am the world's rebound. I build them up, regaining self-confidence. Help them prepare for a full life without me. Why won't my heart callous? Why can't I be hard to these women? knowing that they will soon be gone. When they leave, I smile. I am happy for them. I usually help them into their new life, then sit home in the dark alone and wonder what I did wrong. All right. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I did that one before. Um, <clears throat> okay. Random feelings on a Friday afternoon. I feel so out of sorts. I feel the walls are closing in. I feel the water rising to my lips. I feel the absence of warmth from the sun. I feel bill collectors coming in droves. I feel loss as things are taken from me. I feel my heart pound heavier in my chest. I feel my mouth dry. I feel weak. I feel tired. I feel everything slipping. I feel I'm made of slime and putty. I feel it all ending. I feel my cock falling off. I feel anxiety as the phone rings. I feel anger with each text message. I feel fear with the, each email. I feel like shit. I feel hungry. I feel the need to sleep. I feel like giving up. I feel I already have. Wow, these are sad. Like this was... These were written during a time, guys. During a fucking time. Oh, oh. And then... Oh, that's kind of... You know what? Fuck it. I'll read it. <clears throat> this is kind of gross, I think. All the names in my phone. Love that last one. Thank you, Adam. There was a small black woman squeezing and rubbing the tits of a tall redhead as if she were molding something that would soon that soon wouldn't be the tits of a tall redhead. A few feet away, a 1970s looking pimp was scoping the area, the lookout for whatever the fuck was happening. Why doesn't this shit happen when I'm not sick? Head in a vice of razor blades and throat. Sinuses full of concrete. I made it home just in time to play a game of chicken with the street sweeper and the parking cop. When I'm sick, all I want to do is blast. I want connection, a physical connection with a body so I could blow my penis nose into the Kleenex pussy of my medicine going through my contacts now. That was quite the metaphor, guys. Good fucking God. Jesus fucking Christ. All right. So, yeah. So, yeah, there's a couple other ones in there, but whatever. So, here we are, folks. Okay, I'm going to try to read one out of this book. Wasn't loving it when I 
picked it up the first time. So let's see here. Uh, let's see, is there anything in here that looks like it won't drive me crazy? Not drive me crazy. It just. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Um, you know what? I'm going to read this because, <clears throat> yeah. So this, again, is out of Elegy from a Beat Generation. And this is called On the Day Alan Died. <clears throat> On the day Alan died, I saw a green truck in the sky and read his supermarket poem where naughty Walt Whitman eyes the grocery boys. Now it is four centuries since Alan detonated, taking a tambourine and dimmed and the dimmed outline of beautiful travelers. Good old Alan, sitting on a chair, way up in the sky, reading poems to Philip the Bear. You'd think the world existed for creation and forward motion. You hope a subway train, you, oh wait, sorry, you hop a subway train, find yourself on a black sidewalk in the rain, trying not to be frightened or completely insane. You follow Alan into a dark hole of a dime store, poke around. He's talking to a crusty hipster by the Coca-Cola machine. The largest moon in the world hovered over Alan's head. I do like that line. That's a good line right there. When he died, we thought maybe we've lost some of our spirit. We said goodbye to American Rebellion and gone on to other scenes. <clears throat> on the day he died, the pensive truths were ever more rooted. We knew the poet was a marvelous disgrace. <clears throat> Just as we all are in our way. He praised carnations, this king of the May in communist Prague in 1965. We admire ourselves anyway. In our silly hats in wintry, somber bedrooms, trying to. I can't see my eyes are getting kind of cloudy. Trying to wring some snow out of emptiness in order to believe one more time, if for no other reason. On the day Alan died, I was surprised to find a drop of grace flying in my face. I said the elusive monarch will return to rule because the poet lay in bed surrounded by the rise and fall of mortal light. <clears throat> he closed his eyes and everything was fine. Shit. <sighs> I 
Hey, Jeff, how you doing, man? Fuck. Was lucky enough to find myself able to pay respects to him in New York. Nice. Well, for those of you who are late to the game today, um, Neely Tchaikovsky has died um, two days ago. And I found out when I woke up today. And um, so there is a lot of rage and anger going on right now and sadness but more selfish anger than anything else for me But anyway, yeah, he will be missed, and now he will be treated with respect, and people will love him now, and all that other shit. Oh, shit, man. God damn it. Okay. Um, oh, this is the great thing about poetry. Even though I, when I first started reading this book, I didn't like it. There were like two lines in that one poem that makes that book um, good. Like, I don't care what the rest of the book says. <laughs> Those two lines um, were worth the book, for sure. Goddamn. And as soon as I pull my fucking face out of my ass, I'll read another one. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, go to um, lithicpress.com and um, buy a bunch of his books today. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, and if anybody wants any of my books, since we were talking about that, and I'm going to fix that Etsy thing, I'm going to try to at least. If anybody wants anything, send me an email, and um, I'll just send you a bunch of fucking books. Okay, so this is called Poetry and Success. Do you understand why she came running into the basement Dumb ochre paintings hung upside down. What did she expect? Success or what? Does anyone dare imagine in wicked hours a poem? 
was designed to explain anything. A poem explains nothing. Meant to be primitive. Comment on process. You may ask, what process? The poem is a Twitter of inner mind. A financial burden. Unless you are handsome and know how to win awards and garner accolades. But in truth, poetry acts as a cover for success. Yep, poetry is a cross-dresser, drag queen. The poem is a massive pile of paper. The poem is askew on the uh, cumulus or prancing on ozone or falling like a leaf or blowing in the breeze or escaping from a prison cell or hanging by a noose. You must understand. I beg you to understand. You need to go under the skin of it. Put your fingers around it. Stop explaining. You are already dressed for success. Dylan Thomas drank his poems to death in the White Horse Tavern. Robert Frost saw the dark oak and blesses us, and so on and so on. Guess who comes next? Poetry is raw power, a ticket for success. So let her run and trip. <clears throat> if the basement floods, so fucking what? She owns it. She understands. <clears throat> Couple good things in there. I hate the way it's written with the um, quatrains, no matter what. But that's okay. Oh, yeah, that's a whole other thing I didn't even think about. I wonder if that's what this poem's about. I'll talk about that in a second. Mr. Gilsdorf, hello. Um, yeah. Uh, since we're talking about this, uh, actually, let me read that first line. I'm not even going to read the poem. I'm just going to read the first line because it made me start thinking about a bunch of shit. It's called Papers. All over my generation, a few cardboard boxes of the high and low stacked in a closet behind bookshelves, a misery of papers to load when the time comes. Um, I'm going to keep reading that later, but um, it's just crazy. Like, back in the day, writers would have drawers full and boxes full and crates full and closets full of just page after page after page after page after page. And when a writer or a poet would die, there would have to be tons of people coming in, going through this mountain of their life's work, just stacks and stacks and stacks. And now if somebody dies, someone has to fucking plug a thumb drive into the side of a computer. And the hardest thing they're going to have to do is try to find out what the password to the computer was. And then they put the little fucking thumb drive on their keychain and just like gently stroll out the front door and then stop at Starbucks and get a cup of coffee and then get into their fucking electric vehicle and drive quietly back to wherever the fuck it is they live. Wow. Old man screaming at clouds. I just fucking lost my fucking shit right there. Ah, oh, what a different fucking world, man. What a different fucking world. And the funny thing is, I have probably three big totes, like three big plastic totes of notebooks from like my childhood up and up through probably um, the early 2000s. And then everything after that 
is on hard drives. Nikki, hello, how you doing? So I'm in this like in between phase. Jeff is probably in an in between phase. I like the romance of a writer hoarding. Uh, what's that say right there under the heart? Hoarding their life's work. Yeah, there there is something kind of nice about it. But the the tragedy comes when somebody who doesn't give as much of a shit has to start rifling through their belongings. So hopefully every writer has someone who gives a shit to rifle through their shit. Um, do you journal? I'm trying to get better at it. Um, I did for a while. Um, and I have a video somewhere of this, but um, I used to have roommates like way back in the day. And when I worked different hours than they all did, and I found out pretty soon after that my roommates would hang out in my room all the time. And so when I would be journaling about how I wanted to like beat the shit out of my roommates, um, I didn't want them to know what I was doing, so I created a language, like um, a written language. And um, I'm like, okay, it can't just be 26 characters because if they give a shit, they'll figure that out. So I'm like, okay, so instead of every letter, I need to make a symbol for every sound. And um, so that, I mean, this probably took like a month of like tinkering with, and probably didn't even take that long. But so I uh, came up with this script. And so I started keeping a journal in that. And um, then like the next couple weeks, they started acting really weird around me, like looking at me like there was something wrong with me and shit. And just like would get like really wide eyed when I'd come in and like they wouldn't really talk to me. And I'm like, I bet they're looking at my journal and noticing that shit's a little weird. So then like I took a shower one day and then um, I drew a like in the steam on the mirror, I drew a fucking pentagram and fucking um, just like wrote a bunch of shit like you guys are fucking idiots that you think there's something wrong with me i'm just fucking with you guys but i did it in my new symbols right and then i went around and i changed all the light bulbs to red bulbs and so they would come in and turn on the lights and it would just turn red and then um one of them took a shower and when they got out of the shower they saw that and um, he like slammed the door and he's like, all right, I've had enough. Like, like, I don't know what the fuck it is you're doing, but like, you need to stop. Like, I, like they thought I was like trying to like curse them or something. It was pretty funny, but like, like I found out one of my roommates would always fuck his girlfriend in my bed because he liked my bed better than his bed. And um, for some reason she liked to fuck in my room, which was weird. But anyway, um, yeah, so that ended up being a thing. So after that, I kind of stopped journaling and I just started writing like whenever I needed to write something. Like instead of like journaling my thoughts and shit, I would just like write a poem or write a song and um, date it like I'm doing a journal. But I would just do that. The tragedy comes in the form of a relative wielding a shredder or a recycle bin. Oh my God, isn't that the fucking truth, dude? Yeah, awful, awful. And um, like, hopefully, um, our parents will never outlive us because I think if anyone is likely to destroy your life's work, it'll be your parents coming in and um, tossing your shit. 
Uh, let's see. Shaylin, what is up? I'm glad you're back. I guess work didn't completely slow down. Um, you're a freaking legend. <laughs> Excellent. Nikki, that is fucking clever as shit. Very nice. I like that. Very, very good. Oh, man. I'll, I'll look for it. I think I know where it is. It's in one of the totes, but um, I'll do another video about it and show you guys like just like the pages. And it's like super like it's like Morrissey's writing a book. It's like just like block text. It's just like the whole thing is like like there's like no breaks in anything. It's it's probably fucking terrifying for sure. Like if you don't know. Yeah. Oh, uh oh. Bong, 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 bong. Shaylin, I'm still singing that fucking song. Like you left and that song's still on in my head. Bong, 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 bong. All right. Papers. All over. And I don't even know if that's what this poem's about. I just like assume that's what the poem was about. So let's see if I was correct here. Papers. All over my generation, a few cardboard boxes of the high and low stacked in a closet behind bookshelves, a misery of papers to load when the time comes. They whisper fake views, shame. Shame when I was 13, listening to gutter rats. Other boys loved baseball. Genius boys smirking so that one day they'd run law firms like GD, who served a large corporation. I saw his business squirming in class, foul mind of a teacher's narrow truth, which might as well be Sunday's editorial. Ten boxes of stuff, three boxes of trees, flowers, mostly roses. How many times can you get away with that? Roads, rows of spoons, a tow truck, tough luck, papers are a mess, smears of ink, bad printer makes black spots, wrinkled eyes, rubber siding of the lines sprint. Yeah, so that says, I got into this generation by lying and wearing a mask. First a jaguar with gold earrings, then a black cat, white paws. Then they dressed me like a girl, ruby red lipstick. I hid behind red, I hid behind red riding hood until she died. My papers on the thick weight they ate, like concrete sidewalk where homeless folks defecate. We need to unmask the words to understand Yosemite. We must scale snow-capped mountains on our way across the bay. <sighs> Only then we have our say. We light votive sticks. Again, that word. Help me, guys. Help me. For those who labor under wisdom, who haunt abandoned storm drains, witness ludicrous low mind soundtracks, yet survive. We don't worry, no more worry, no dumb, no we, does not matter. Oh way, what changes reminds us relics await. My papers are truly lily pads. I invented performers and artists and put them into cardboard boxes. Boxes came from Office Max, appear strong enough to survive transport to the somber library. On the first page of my papers, I see an airplane crash into a tree long ago, 1953. I was eight, plane made of masking tape. The lady got out, flipped her six shooter until she hit the bullseye. We applauded. My papers make me smile because I am an enemy of the ruthless and artless. 
but am a liar as well. I don't like flags or living under dead weight. Paper I like. Clear white sheets of dread adorn even dark spaces. Closet soon empty, door open. Librarians do not refuse my generation. My friend and neighbor, the poets I admire most, do not change. They grow ancient, not old. Oh. Huh. Anyway. Okay. I'll read this one too. Oh, Carol! A misery of papers. Yeah, there's some good little lines there. I was not a fan of that though. I liked my story of what I thought about poets better than that poem, but I did like that line. Um, let's see. Can someone spell out the poet's name for me? I've been adding to my poetry collection and want to add this gentleman. Not Matt. LOL. I already have some of his work. Ah. I so knew you'd yell my name. Yeah, that's the thing now. I have to yell. But like one day I'm going to say it really quiet and then that's going to scare you. It's like Pavlov. I'm I'm trying to make you salivate, Carol. Come on. See, I just did it really quiet. Really quiet like. Yeah, so it is Neely Tchaikovsky, but I think Shaylin already did it. Yeah, so Shaylin did it. Okay, there it is. Ah. Uh. Uh, no going home. All those dumb years are just dumb. The poster boards and cheap plaster, wobbly chairs, dirty floors. All we can think of is not going home. What we imagine is how we will never go home. Not even when we slam the door shut on acres of light and shadow. I have no son or daughter to mourn a hillside of dying redwood trees, but I will go anyway and not go home on the way. No one will go with me to the darkness. I will not go home. No one will offer a red rose stem for my lips. I will resist any force trying to bring me home. It's difficult to believe any of us will forever fly. I hope for sorrows of stop and go on mountaintops where bighorn spend their days. If they can perish, my identity may vanish. I saw an aged prophet out on the corner. I saw my father take a final fling and perish in a twinkle of an eye, then why shouldn't I go that way? I will tumble through the hole, but never to caress frail stalk of the fig tree my father watered diligently until it drowned. Rooting peaches we could not save every year, I will not go home. Uh, if that poem had been written a bit tighter, that probably would have made me cry. But it was... <laughs> Dude, again, and this is so fucking stupid that I'm going to start getting pissed off about this. When poets start jumping fucking lines and like... Like, they purposefully will put things on separate lines to make the line, if you read the poem, the way anyone would ever fucking read a poem, 
make it all stilted and fucking weird and that like i just absolutely hate it if you're gonna fucking do that just don't put spaces in your poem at all do not have stanza breaks don't even fucking have line breaks like if you don't give a shit about how a line moves just don't even fucking bother with it like it's not like i'm yelling at him now he can't fucking write anything now but like oh okay i'm just getting fucking mad now uh adam okay boss train is pulling into the station so i need to skedaddle i will email you about chapbook oh yeah yeah cool 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 um yeah 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 okay yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna talk shit on the dead but you know i'm also not gonna pull any punches like neely wrote enough good shit that i could fucking um the um the only thing that happened carol is that i haven't mailed it yet because i haven't put anything together for shipments yet um yeah you emailed me i think in january either the end of december or beginning of january and um i've been having a bit of a total fucking collapse over the last couple months I'm feeling better now, so I'm getting back into getting the stores back up, getting everything ready for shipping and all this other shit. I just needed a break. Oh. But because of that, I'm going to send you some extra shit, too. So... Oh, the fuck. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I'm just trying to get through this fucking month, man. This month has been... It's weird. Um, let me say it like this. Like, I... As you guys know, I had a bit of a breakdown back in the fall. And a lot of things got, like, fucked in my life because of me procrastinating and not wanting to deal with things. And then what ended up happening was as I started to get better... Um, all of the seeds I planted in the fall started sprouting. So now I'm having to reap what I sew. And um, I'm having to deal with a lot of the shit that I put off for those months. And um, it's just been fucking a bitch. It has been so fucking hard adulting this month. Like, I don't know if I told you guys this, but, um, oh yeah, I did on that fucking vlog. Like I fucking didn't pay my fucking car insurance for months because I assumed it was automatically coming out of my bank account and I don't check my emails and I don't fucking open mail because mail feels gross on my hand. So it just sits there and I just never thought about it. It was all that shit and I had to fucking take care of that and... Oh, and then all of the lawyer shit I'm dealing with right now for the movie stuff, like that's been kind of a shit show. Like everything is just, uh, it's all falling together now, but it has been a fucking struggle. So I'm getting back into everything. It's just, it's taken me longer than I thought. Boom, 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 uh oh. Jeff says, I'm right there with you, bro. Fucking hell, dude. Yeah. 
We need to have a fucking support group of motherfuckers that just let shit go a little too long. But then we're, we're only supposed to meet like two weeks in a row once a year because the rest of the time we're fine. Uh, Nikki says, dude, that sounds intense. My, oh, let me do this real quick. My anxious, introverted heart feels your pain. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, May is fast approaching. I'll finally get to meet you. IRL. Hell yeah. So May 13th, right? That's the date, right? Because I'm trying to um, get other bookings around the area um, around that time, too. Boom, 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 boom. And, um, like, Shaylin's cats need to fucking be okay with the fact that I'm going to be in their space. I think the people Shaylin lives with will be fine with me there, but the cats will be like, what the fuck? Because I don't even think I've told Shaylin, but I think I'm just going to like be in Shaylin's space for days. And I'm not even going to tell her when the days are. I'm just going to appear. I'm going to be like, um, I don't know like herpes like you just wake up one day and you have a breakout it'll be like that that's what i'll be like i will be like herpes on shaylin um shaylin's hostile <laughs> i'll give you info on other places oh that'd be cool dude yeah That's your new chapbook title. I don't know, dude. I've said a lot of fucked up things in the last 45 seconds. Um, so let me know what that is. The Shay Lynn. Oh, my God. That's so good. That is fucking classic. Man, JH with the puns and stuff, dude. So who was here for um, JH fucking saying um, qualified? And I'm like, I don't understand. I don't get what this means. Uh Good God, that was so stupid. Uh, um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this to you. So, pretty recently, um, I was talking to this woman who kept catching me with these stupid but kind of adorable pickup lines. And I kept thinking she was asking me questions and then I would say something stupid. And then, um, she would like, tell me what the fuck it was. So like, she's like, yeah, do you like star Wars? And I'm like, Oh, well, you know, I did at one point and then I didn't. And then, you know, there's some stuff that's cool and, you know, all this other stuff. And I have this fucking Star Wars tattoo and all this other shit. And, da -da 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 -da. and then she's like, because Yoda won for me. And I'm like, oh, man, I totally walked into that. Like, she was just being funny. And I'm like sitting here being a fucking nerd over here and all this other shit. And um, then, like, she said something like... Um, She's like, yeah, you're really cute. I think you're about a nine. And I'm all pissed off. And I'm like, all right, well, fuck you, bitch. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Yeah, like, you're not even a fucking, like, you're like, oh, I'll give you a 9.5. But, like, you know, that's pretty fucked up. Like, I don't understand, like, why I'm not a 10. And she's like, because I'm the one for you. And that makes you a 10. And I'm like, oh, she's just fucking doing. And it was just like every fucking word this chick fucking said to me was some like cheesy ass laffy taffy fucking pickup line and i kept falling for it 
over and over and over again. And then she fucking, I asked her some question and she's like, what the fuck are you like a bank loan officer or something? Or like, or no, she's like, are you a fucking bank loan? And I'm like, like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Like, no, I don't fucking work at a goddamn fucking bank. Like, what are you fucking talking about? And she's like, um, because you got my interest. And I'm like, oh my fucking God. And it was just like one after another. And seriously, this is probably only like a tenth of the ridiculous fucking things she was throwing at me. And I missed every single one of them. And like a total douchebag, I get all fucking indignant and I start like fucking like yelling at her and shit. And um, dude, you should. And like, but you know what you should do? You should fucking put like, oh shit, I gotta fucking do that today too. There's another thing I got to fucking do today. That's fantastic. <sighs> okay, here's the thing. If you put pickup lines in Chuck's lunches, you need to start the pickup line and then don't finish it until the next day and make him think he's going crazy all fucking day. Make him like go, why the fuck is she asking me about fucking Star Wars? We've already had this talk. Jesus fucking Christ. And then all this other shit. Then the next day go, oh, yeah, do you like Star Wars? Because Yoda won for me. Oh, hearts. And all that shit. But you can't give it to him all at once. You got to make him think that he's going crazy and he's pissed off. That's how making someone think they're losing their fucking mind works. Edging, fucking hell, dude! Oh my fucking god! Oh, okay. Let me let me read something else now. Only if the lunches are loaded with cheese. Oh shit! See now that's a cheesy pickup line. There it is. And I would have been like, oh, Cheez-Its. You want Cheez-Its in your lunch? Okay, fine. I'll fucking make a little fucking sandwich bag full of fucking Cheez-Its. Ugh. What am I doing? Uh-oh. Dude, that song is going to be in my head all fucking day. That's awful. Ugh. What a shit show that song is. Okay, where does this poem start? I don't even really remember what this poem is. But it's like four pages long and it'll keep my mind on something. It is called, I Had a Fever. Bad fever. It was dark and cold outside. But there was a good chance that within the next hour, I would be wearing pussy on my face. So I decided to bear the cold and hike to 7-Eleven. I looked for my warmest shirt with no sleeves and realized all my shirts had no sleeves. Then remembered I had a poncho. I put it on and remembered that it too had no sleeves. The walk to 7-Eleven was uneventful until I hit the parking lot and a homeless man, no shoes, no shirt, walked towards me, swinging a dangerous looking metal pole. I figured he knew better. After I passed him, he swung it hard against the post. A horrible metal twang shouted through the air and was like ice down through my ears to my spine. If I were in better shape, I would have stuck that pole. I walked into 7-Eleven. The glow of the place was too much. It felt like I was in a Technicolor movie, not a good one. The colors were as loud and as the horrible, wait, the colors were as loud as the horrible music and the colors seemed to run like vomit onto a sopping wet floor, 
little men with mops working both tirelessly and lazily confused me. I needed to get out of there. So just got a pack of smokes. My card didn't work. I walked through the madness to the ATM in the back. A mop man told me it didn't work. Then I remembered the whole reason I was there was because the pussy that was to be on my face soon requested a sweet wine, which I don't drink. So I had none. These people and their broken machines were interfering with a sick and dying man's ability to get his dick wet. I closed my eyes, walked briskly towards the door, arms out, hoping to make it out of there with causing more of a scene. There was a <clears throat> there was this small man with a stupid grin outside. I thought he was asking me for something, but suddenly my ears clogged with nothing stopped working. And while this asking, grinning man made his mouth move in silence, he had his arms outstretched to me with a dollar bill flapping in the air. Was he trying to give me his money? Did I look like I needed a handout? Could he sense my pain? He really looked like he wanted something from me. I pointed to my ears, shook my head, and kept walking. I made it to the donut shop, tried the ATM, and it said that there was a problem to call the bank. How could there be a problem? I just got paid $400 for a shit story that I couldn't believe sold. That money was there for me to buy sweet wine for the pussy that may end up on my face now in less than an hour. I sat in an oil stain in the parking lot, crying into my sleeveless poncho while homeless people gathered around me. I laid back looking up into the black void and watched missiles dart across the sky like Chris cut fries, knowing that it would only be a matter of time now. Wow. That was a thing I just did. So, apologies. It is time for me to make another cup of coffee. So while I do that, I think I'm going to try another wasabi soy sauce almond. Mm. Oh, the fuck? That was gross. That was the last one. God damn it. Those are so good. All right. The vomit line was a nice touch. Thank you, Nikki. All right, everyone, get your drinks. I don't know what we're doing next, but it might be something. I do have to print out chapbooks today. So we will figure this out. And apparently I need to fucking call people back. Not happy. Oh. 
come on water, heat up. People are waiting. This is embarrassing. I don't know if I should do... Let me know. Do you guys want me to just do what I'm doing the way I'm doing it right now? Or do you want me to stop the stream, start a new stream that I could share screens on to where you can see what I'm putting in the book and the stuff like that? What would be a better viewing experience? Oh, wait, the water's almost there. I could hear it. It's getting angry. Yeah, close enough. <sighs> and we're back. Hope you enjoyed that commercial break. Uh oh. Um, I am going to read that myth of Sisyphus poem. Um, and you guys let me know. Like, do you want me to do that thing? Like, do you want me to stop this and start a new one with a screen share? Or do you want me to just do it how I'm doing this now. Okay. <clears throat> My myth of Sisyphus. Turning the corner to the little walkway up to 7-Eleven, I almost fell over. A mass of dirty blankets. Sorry. I almost fell over a mass of dirty blankets. I lunged out of the way, looking down to cuss the fucker that almost killed me. And looking back at me were the biggest, saddest brown eyes. Locked into the face of a sad, cute girl. My eyes ran up and down. She was slight, but barefoot. Her feet and ankles were swollen five times their normal size, I would guess. Looked like they were covered in tar. She was scratching her crotch and seemed to be pulling things, little bugs, off of her. The blanket that covered her was filthy and smelled like death. She whispered something I couldn't hear. She was handing me a dollar. I didn't take it. She said cherry coke and pointed to 7-Eleven. I told her I would get her one. Her eyes haunted me the whole time I was in that store. I grabbed a Coke, then at the register, thought she should eat something. And picked up a Snickers bar, too. I walked over to her handed her the cherry Coke. She said, God bless you. Then I handed her the Snickers. Are you okay? I asked her. I'm okay, she said. Look, why don't you come back to my place, get a shower, I'll wash your clothes, make you some food. To fuck, she asked. Wait a minute, how old are you? 18. Really? No, 19. Why did you say 18? Don't guys like younger girls? I helped her onto her deformed feet. She bobbled and almost fell over. My mind started playing tricks on me. I thought I could feel microscopic bugs crawling all over me, burrowing into my skin. I led her up the hill to my building. We had to walk very slow. and I kept thinking she was going to fall over backwards, 
rolling down to the bottom of the hill, me having to play Sisyphus. Luckily, there was no one in the lobby, no one in the elevator. That ride seemed slower than every other ride. The smell coming off of her filled that little box quickly to the point where I held my breath the last floor. I was nervous, trying to get my keys in the right locks, something I've done hundreds of times before. I looked at her. She looked at me and smiled, a very bright and clean smile. She smiled with her eyes. All right, I said, straight to the bathroom, there. I pointed, then ran into the kitchen, got two big trash bags, and ran back to the bathroom. Found her still bundled up, standing next to the tub. Take all that shit off and put it in the bag. Actually, stand in the tub and do it. She did. I had to help her in. I left the bags there, turned and headed out. Wait, she said. I need you to help me. I was just trying to give you privacy. Two blankets filled one bag, everything else in the other bag. Shorts with shit stains, a broken bra, a top ripped to hell, and a hoodie. I tied the bags off and ran them to the door. I wanted to put them in the wash immediately, but didn't want to leave her in my place alone while I was in the basement. They would have to wait. I walked back into the bathroom and she stood there, my naked beauty with giant ankles and feet covered in tar and shit and dried blood. Do you need me to turn on the water? She nodded. I turned it on expecting her to move, flinch, something, but she stood firm the way a statue doesn't move in the rain. I handed her the soap. She looked at me like she expected me to do it. I just stared at her eyes. I couldn't help but think of all the bugs that were fighting their way out of those trash bags, about the ones that jumped off of her once we entered. I looked down at the brown water, seeing little specks of living things trying to swim to dry land. Only finding the drain. I'll give you some clothes to wear and then you can come with me to the basement and we'll wash your stuff. Or we could just toss it and I'll give you new stuff. She nodded. I would like to fuck you, she said. You're being nice to me. I sighed. This whole thing felt weird and awful and dirty. I looked at her bush and saw small white creatures crawling around. I squinted my eyes, took a closer look, grabbed a comb out of the medicine cabinet and turned back to her. Let go, she said. What? I said, feeling her tugging. I looked down. I was still holding the Snickers bar. We were still in front of 7-Eleven. God bless you, she said. I released my grip and jolted back, caught my breath. Stay warm out here tonight. Thank you, she said. And I walked up the hill to my building, still feeling like Sisyphus. And that was that. I'm mostly just listening, so either way, it's fine here at least. Okay. Tempest Miller, what is up? Hello. Um, yeah, just so you know, I was going to post that video today about the stalkering shit that um, you left that comment about. And um, I woke up and realized it was, it was World Poetry Day. And I realized that Neely Tchaikovsky had died. So um, I did not put the video up. And I've been doing this for almost three hours. Good fucking God. And here we are. And for some reason, I've been singing that Tokyo Drift song in my head 
ever since I woke up. I think it was in my dream. So I think that's why um, it is playing loudly in my head speakers. Oh, man. See, it's still, it's still happening. It's still happening. World Poetry Day always comes out of nowhere, not marked on my calendar. Yeah, I never, ever think about it or remember it or anything. And the only reason why it ever comes to me is because someone smarter than me posted something on Instagram. And I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe I should do something. Because isn't next month National Poetry Month? Like we're supposed to do something all month long? Nikki says, I'm listening while working. So whatever works best for you, dude. All right. I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep going. I was going to add some more poems to the new book and do the new cover. Um, but then I also got to look through all of the papers I have because I have like different types of card stock left and I have some different kind of paper left as well. And so I need to figure out like what I can make stuff out of. Let's see if I can kill my printer while trying to make books. That will be the goal for today. And then I also have to do some other shit Legal stuff sucks, guys. Oh, I should make it clear. I'm not in any kind of trouble or anything. I'm trying to um, get things that belong to me from people. And um, getting lawyers involved and then paying lawyers and then realizing you pay lawyers to do stuff, but they make you do all the work anyway. And then you wonder, like, what the fuck is your job? Like, am I paying you just because you're, you know, the judge and like, I have a better possibility of something happening because you played golf with some motherfucker. It's such a shit show world, dude. Yeah. I prefer illegal stuff. Yeah. Me too. Me too. I prefer illegal stuff, but I also don't like the ramifications of illegal stuff. Their job is deciphering the legal jargon that is from Latin. Is it though? Ugh. I'm sure it is. I'm sure that's what they're there for. But we have Google now. So, like, do we really need lawyers? We have AI. Chat GPT could probably write out any kind of complaint that I need to make in the uk their job is to let me see to wear wigs yes that is a good job that is a good job wear a fucking wig do they still wear those i think they do and then i think when um they leave for the evening they go to the gentleman's club and wear merkins powdered merkins because that's fancy. Uh oh. Wow, that's quite the visual. <laughs> that's barristers' wigs. So just them wear it, or does everybody wear it? Like, do they all shop at the same wig store, or are wigs passed down from other wig wearers once they, like, retire? They go, I'm not going to be needing this anymore. 
Here, I want you to wear my powdered wig. There is no lice or crabs in my wig. Hmm. Uh oh. Bing, 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 bing. I want all you guys at work right now, like you're watching this and you're like typing and you're doing this thing and then you're like bing 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 like you're just like rocking out to some shit fucking song. All right. So I'm going to read another one out of this one. This one's called Roy. Roy came from a Carney family. They moved state to state, setting up shows, running concessions, handing out stuffed rabbits and operating rides. Like the hammer and the bumper cars, he spoke like the Wyoming, Texas and the vast Dakota night. We'd set up early, then eat breakfast before the gates opened and the crowds came in. Roy left the carnival to work at a nearby air base in the supply department, stapling forms, moving them from one box to another. Easy work that paid steady. He was one of the guys I'd drink with in the hills behind Mentone. He taught me songs like Casey Jones and The Old Grey Goose is Dead. I can't believe I just read a poem that has the town Mentone written in it. Oh my fucking God. Like that place is like a fucking just you stop there for gas. That is so funny. Um, Roy was 40. It seemed old to me then as I was just 16. He claimed to have ridden on a flying saucer that took him to Mars, where Jesus and Muhammad met in a beautiful park and took him to dinner. The rest of us would sit there, almost believing. It seemed as near to the truth as anything else, once you started to think. It was 1962, and who could have imagined that the president would be shot a year later while riding through the streets of Dallas. And even if it wasn't truly true, it was true for Roy, who'd sit there wide eyes believing. He went back to the carnival work abruptly when he got word that they needed him in Ohio. His father had died and his two uncles were left one man short. <sighs> Mentone, dude. Shit. What a fucking town. That's the town I would stop in to get gas and any kind of accoutrements I would need to drive up the back way to get up into Big Bear. Certain courts demand certain dress, wigs, and robes. And yes, a few select places sell them. Solicitors, aka lawyers, wear ill-fitting suits and a smug expression. That's a beautiful poem, Nikki. Now I'm paranoid. I took a joke literally and nerded out on British legal tradition. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm serious. Like, it wasn't. It might have started out as a joke, but then turned quite legit because I do not know the answer to these questions. So that, that's cool. That's cool. That works. Yeah, and if I if my if my British knowledge 
works at all right now. Isn't it the House of Lords where people are wearing even worse ill-fitted suits and just sleeping in chairs, doing absolutely nothing except lording over people? I'm going to dip. But y'all have a good one. All right, Carol. That sounds good. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, um, I am going to split for a little bit because I need to fill out some documents and email them back to the lawyer. And, um, oh, dude, this is the never ending cycle. Like I fill forms out, I send them in and then I am told that I either did them wrong, sent the wrong ones, or I didn't send the attachments with the documents that I needed to send. It's this never ending cycle. What part of the UK are you in, Nikki? Give us your GPS coordinates. Oh, House of Parliament is where they sleep on the benches. House of Lords is where they sleep in benches in wigs and robes. <laughs> Oh, so it's basically a great place for a nap, is what you're saying. Got it. Yay, I'm in Sweden. Socially anxious Northern European people unite. Hertfordshire, which is out, is just outside London. Everything is just outside of London. And maybe it's only just outside of London if it has the word shire after it. It seems like every place I've heard of with a shire is right outside of London. I wonder if that was, if that's purposeful. That might be a whole other thing. All right. So Nikki is East Enders is greater than Coronation Street. I understand. I understand completely now. Kent, what is up? What's for lunch? Taco? Oh, man, I wish. I could throw back some tacos right now. Actually, I'm not quite that hungry. It's a pretty rural place I'm in. Nearest place of note are Watford, mentioned in Love Actually, in the St. Albans. Love Actually. Was that the movie I watched the other month? Was that what that was? Who's in that? Who's in Love Actually? Who's actually in love, actually? Or was that the one I watched like a year ago? I usually watch some, I get talked into watching a movie like that. Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson, okay. That was the one I watched um, like two Decembers ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's stacked as heck. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Every British actor ever. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. I I I I recall. I recall the film. I recall the film. Uh oh. Yep. It's the one where Hugh Grant is the prime minister and does a creepy dance. 
Yes. Or cringy dance. Close enough. I saw Hugh Grant and I am and I saw the word dance and I immediately thought of his scandal with the prostitute. Clouds and Joni Mitchell alert. I think you were forced to watch the holiday by someone the other day. Yes, that is the one I watched the other day. Yes, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. I'm like, I know there is a movie that I saw. Um, I think Kate Winslet is the only one not in it. That's okay, because she was in the holiday. Um, if I remember correctly, same difference, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's funny, because um, I'm trying to remember. I got into an argument with the woman who made me watch The Holiday, because I was always under the impression that Kate Winslet was from New Zealand or from Australia, because... I heard the story that Peter Jackson discovered Kate Winslet like at a train station or like a cafe or something and then made beautiful creatures. And I'm like, oh, so if Peter Jackson is from New Zealand, maybe he's not even from New Zealand, but I thought he was. I thought bad taste and meet the feebles and all that shit was more Australia, New Zealand. But apparently um, Kate Winslet is not from New Zealand. And so me and this woman who made me watch that fucking movie argued for like an hour while the movie was on pause. And we were both frantically Googling, trying to see which one of us was right. And it turns out that this time, this rare occasion, I was not correct. So, for fuck's sake, I'm glad that I wasn't right that time. I don't fucking care either way. The Titanic is Peter Jackson's fault then. Yes, yes. Eternal Sunshine is good, though. Yeah, I haven't seen that since it came out. I remember going to see it. But Beautiful Creatures is pretty good. If you guys have never seen that. But again, I say that as someone who saw that movie in probably like 95 or 96. So, I don't know. I've read books that I've read back then that I used to think were great. And I read them now and I'm like, God, this is garbage. What the fuck was I thinking? So, maybe you shouldn't take any any recommendations from me. Maybe I'm all I'm all bad. I'm all awful. It's all shit. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get those papers and sent back to the man. And then um, I might do a different Zoom, or not Zoom, but a different stream with my screen sharing options open so you can see what the fuck it is I'm doing. I think that will be the plan. Without beautiful creatures, we wouldn't have Lord of the Rings. So there's that. And without the Shire, we wouldn't have Tolkien, which wouldn't have given us the Hobbit, which wouldn't have given us Lord of the Rings. So there's that. It all comes full circle. Oh, I'm sure I place things in, improperly there, but... Um, Good luck with the man papers. Oh, thank you. Because, like, I'm not even going to read them. I'm just, I'm I'm done reading things. I'm just going to sign things now. Like, I, I know nothing. All right. So, um, the Worcestershire Shire. Well, I like Worcestershire Shire in my Bloody Marys. So, yes. Yes, there will be more today. Happy World Poetry Day. R.I.P. Neely. And I will see you guys in a bit. Thanks for hanging out.